Hello and welcome to another video. As I said in my video that probably went out yesterday about the um, lighting setup for YouTubers, uh, it's been about six weeks since I shot anything, but you've been seeing all the videos I shot in October and November have been trickling out on uh, YouTube a couple of weeks in December. So thanks for all the comments and everything. This one I'm going to be repairing without making it any worse. This from, I think it's from the 70s, we'll have a look at the box. Um, this is actually going to go out and be shot in at least two different parts because I've got to go out in a minute and it's really busy in December for me. So this is a Pong game. You probably heard of Pong which was a 70s uh, video arcade game. Uh, basically you get uh, on a screen you get two bats one each side and you have to uh, bat a square ball between them. It's a bit like tennis. And this one came out, my parents got it, either in the late 70s or the early 80s. You know me, I don't research anything. And it's got uh, football, which is uh, soccer, squash, practice, which is where you play against yourself, and uh, tennis. Four variations on that game. So uh, it's been, obviously the original box has been taped up. <laughs> and even the, the glue on the tape is gone as well. So let's have a quick look around the box. Um, so it's hard to read. Let's have a look. Let's see if we get it. Um, I can't even read it. Uh, there you go. So pause, pause the video if you want to read that. Five feet of cord. So it was obviously before we went metric, which was 1971, I guess. No, it must be after we went metric. In England, we went metric in um, for decimalization for currency in 1971 uh, but we still use miles uh, on our roads but we use meters and metric measurements for almost everything else in fact you can't sell um, goods in shops using imperial measurements you've got to use metric measurements so i wonder if there's a date i could probably look this up i might do a little bit of research afterwards and put something up on screen so here we go, here's, here's the view of the four games. So football, so you've got um, the left hand side, that, that player is the left player, and that one there is the left player, and this one and this one are the right players. Um, that is uh, squash, where you've got two bats and the ball bounces against the end wall and the, and the top and bottom walls. Practice is the same as that, but you've got one bat. And then tennis is where you've got just two opposing players bouncing the ball around. And this is it. And the problem it problem I've got with it is the controller. Hopefully it's a, an easy fix. Nothing in the box. So obviously it's all wired. Good old fashioned British plug. Oh still in use obviously. It connects with a UHF aerial wire, an antenna wire, which is built in. This um, uh, Velcro, you know, hook and loop pad, I think, was to stick it to your TV. Um, so I don't know why it's on there. I thought it was on the side. But yeah, so you put the other part on the TV and you stick it to the TV. Big old fashioned tube TV. So there's the select of other types of games reset button, a serve button, which means start essentially. If it's on manual, if it's on automatic serve, it'll automatically serve, obviously. Big proper power buttons. There's the angle of the um, uh, rebound of the ball. Speed high and low, and the ball, uh, the bats are either small or large. As far as I know, all these are working. This is a detachable controller here. It just slots in there. And when I turn this one, it works fine. And when I turn this one, the bat moves in jerky increments because I think the um, the variable resistor or the potentiometer inside that has oxidized, which should be a fairly simple job of just using some um, uh, contact clean on that, which I've got. And does it work on batteries? That's a good question. I can't remember whether you can play it just on batteries or whether you have to plug it in. Oh, you can play it on batteries. So we'll work on a 9 volt square PP3 battery, which I'm glad has not been left in there. 
or a lovely clicky buttons. Right, so uh, the first thing we're going to have to do is get out a TV that has um, an RF aerial input on it, which I've just got. I've kept an old one, it's under the desk. But that TV is in quite a mess, so I have to give it a bit of a dust off, connect it all up and uh, show you what the problem is, which will be after I popped out for the dad's taxi run. So I'm dusting off this really quite horrible Goodman's um, widescreen LCD TV, um, which um, I only use for things like uh, when I'm using an old-fashioned VCR. Look at all those sockets on it. So it's got it's got SCART, it's got um, component in, it's got VGA, it's got all all of these. It's got the aerial we need, the aerial socket we need, and HDMI. Although the HDMI looks terrible, so it's a really useful bit of kit, but it's really not very good. Right, so I've got it all connected up, just in case you want to know. That is the um, power adapter for it. It's only 10 milliamps, 9 volts, uh, but it's hardwired hard -wired into the, uh, to the unit. So you probably won't need to get another one of those unless you're replacing the wires. Right, now let's turn it on because uh, the TV is now connected up and it's plugged in. I've got to tune the TV in, and to do that, I've got to turn it on. So, we've got an on off switch here, and it's not plugged in at the power. Hang on a second, there we go. Hope it won't go bang. Yep, yeah, that's not how it's supposed to sound. Let's try it again. Ah, there's the reset button. So, the sound comes out of the speaker on the back of this, which is a bit loud. Um, and now I've got to try and tune this in. I can't remember how to do it, so I'll probably uh, come back to you once I've tuned it in. Right, I think I figured it out. This here uh, should give you the score, so 2 on one side of 15 on the other. I don't know why this is happening. Um, I've tried to tune the TV in, but it's, as I said earlier on, it's not a very good TV. And I think it's, I don't know how to use the fine tuning on it. I might try it downstairs on our family TV, but I'm not set up to video down there. So anyway, let's look at the problem. So these, I'm covering up the volume button now. So these move the bats. See the bats there? That one moves that one. And this one moves this one here. You can see there, as I turn it slowly, is wobbling around and that I think is dirty contacts inside there. Um, we could also make the bats large using this button here. Bat size. That makes them bigger. Still the same though, so you can't really play it like that. So let's turn this thing off and take this to pieces and see if we can clean it inside. Right, so we can pull this knob off here but I don't want to really because all I've got inside there is a, um, a nut. I might have to, I might have to get in there. So all I want to do is spray some deoxit on it or some WD-40 contact cleaner. So the first thing we're going to do is, oh, wow. No. I'm going to undo this and see if we can get this part off. So let me get a screwdriver. So my lighting's all right at the moment, but I might get a bit more light on the subject with my very expensive four pound lighting setup. Okay, out. Oh, there's a clip there, look. Don't really want to put a metal object on it because it's probably quite brittle after all these years. Oh, we're in. Ah, oh, there you go. So there it is. So can we squirt it into there? I've got a funny feeling. Okay, let me get some more light on it. 
Right, so if we can look just inside that hole there, we should be able to see it spinning round, maybe. No. So inside that is the variable resistor. And what I want to do is spray some contact cleaner in there. I'm going to have to go in through here, aren't I? Okay, so... Oh, there we go, it did come off. Oh yeah, I'm going to have to undo that, aren't I? So I'm going to have to undo that. That holds it in position there. Um, I'm not sure I've got a spanner for that. Let me have a look. Okay, cheap old adjustable spanner. see in there yeah there you go can you see that in there right in the center of the screen now as I turn it round you can see the wiper here it is. So on the end of that, I'm going to better look like this. Let me see if I can get some more light on it. Right, we could just about see it in there. As so I twist this, there's the arm that moves around right in the centre. Sorry, I can't get a better shot than that. Now I could bend these off. And take the plate face plate off but I don't want to if I snap those then I'm screwed so what I'm going to do I oh, can see just about there you see that little wiper arm just inside here if you're looking on a big screen you could probably see more than me I'm looking at a phone scan camera and that's five and a half inches big so basically I want to get some oh I can see it quite well through here but you can't because <laughs> of the because of where the lighting is um, but anyway, I'm just going to spray some contact cleaner in there. The act of spraying it means you won't be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to do it off camera. I'll show you where though. I'm going to be spraying it in there somewhere. And this is WD-40 Specialist Contact Cleaner. You can use Deoxit as well, but this is a bit cheaper. So let me do that and we'll come back to the video. Okay, I've done it. It sounds like it's popping, but it's unplugged. So basically I've got to wind that all the way around now to clean off that oxidation in there. So the WD-40 contact cleaner and deoxy is primarily um, IPA, isopropyl alcohol. And it also has something else in which coats the contacts and makes them, um, uh, gives them better connections. Actually, looking at that, I don't even think that's soldered on. Oh, you see, it's soldered on now. So it's wrapped around and then soldered at the top. Actually, it doesn't even look as if it's wrapped around. You know what I reckon's happened? I reckon someone's had this to pieces before. Cut the wire. I wonder if the wire was damaged and they've cut the wire and then just wrapped it around the posts. Might even have been me, could have been my dad. Might even have been me, right, so do I dare touch this? No, I'm gonna put it back in the uh put it back in the cut in the uh controller housing and do it all back up again. So you might want to see that, so can't remember which way up it was now. It's gotta be that way now. It? It's gotta be that way up. 
no there it is so that little lug there goes in that hole at the top push that in there put the washer on put the nut on Simple devices, simpler times. That's it, goes in that way, doesn't it? Lovely job, screw. Got some background noise of someone watching TV in the next room, so I'll have to talk over that, I think. Don't want any problems with copyright, so hopefully that has dried off a bit. So let me get set up again, I'll turn it on. Right, it's back on. That was about there, wasn't it? Let's turn it on. Press the reset button. And look at that! Smooth as butter. Let me do this way around. God, that's noisy. Here we go. What a... Oh, lovely. Let's give you a demo then. So we're going to do practice, which is here. I think this is just a tuning problem, maybe this TV. So let's press the start, let's press the uh, serve button. Now where's the start button? There we go. Oh, we're off already, I've missed a point. So you have to twist this around. Oh, can I get it all in shot? Uh, not really, there we go. And that's how you do it. What speed are we on? Oh, we're on high speed. Let's go to low speed. That's going to make it slightly easier for me. And depending on where it hits in the bat, if it hits in the middle of the bat, it's just going to go shallow angle. But if it's on the corner of the bat, it goes at a much steeper angle. Obviously, it's a bit easy, so I'm going to switch to a high speed. You can have a small, small bats. So that makes it more difficult. Um, we are on the high angle here. Let's go down to the lower angle. Let's reset. Change the bat size actually. Let's go to the large bat. Can't remember how to play this now, but yeah. So when the angle is set at 20, uh, 20 degrees instead of 40, it doesn't matter where you hit the ball, even on the edge of the bat, it's going to go at 20 degrees. And switching it over to 40 instead of 20, then it can go at different angles depending on where you hit it. So if it hits near the centre of the bat, it's going to go at 20. And at the edge of the bat, if I can get it on the edge of the bat, missed it. It's going to go at 40 degrees. You could also spin it, I think, by flicking. Maybe that doesn't. Maybe I should, Oh, there we go. Anyway, exciting, isn't it? But this was the state of home entertainment when this came out. And I remember playing for ages on this. I suppose I could. Oh, it's so noisy. So let's go to tennis. Let's reset. So you've got two, two controllers now. I wonder if I could play against myself. Obviously, having no mates when this came out, this is what I did. Ah, it's hard to do with just your thumb. <laughs> anyway, so that's tennis. The other games are, uh, they've got the practice, which is squash for one player. And then squash for two players. One and two. And finally, football, which was slightly more interesting because you had your, your, your goalkeeper and you had your um, attacker. I just scored against myself now. I'm losing and I'm the only one playing. So yeah, very simple. One, two, uh, I think you played to uh, 12 or 15. 
very, I mean, for the time it was amazing. We didn't have anything. This was the first computer game, first home console we had. So there it is. It's the Hanimex 666S. Unfortunate uh, name, but there, that's what it is. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.